couple of years have not been kind to Warriors fans. The unfortunate injuries to Klay Thompson and Steph Curry two years ago ultimately led to them becoming a lottery team. Then last year to just barely missing the playoffs despite Steph Curry putting up some of the best numbers of his entire career and also being at the forefront of the MVP conversation. Now, there's no denying that it's been somewhat of a difficult couple of years to be a Golden State fan. Now, let's not act like they weren't spoiled over the last decade with some of the greatest team success of the last 15 years. But yeah, they went from being really, really good to really, really bad within the span of one season. The biggest factor at play here is no doubt the injury struggles for Klay Thompson, who hasn't played in an NBA game since the 2019 NBA Finals, which was 860 days ago. Klay was obviously such an integral part of that team, and it's not exactly easy to fill the void left by losing one of the greatest shooters that the NBA has ever seen. Fast forward to now and we're looking at what I would consider to be a completely retooled Golden State team. Now I wouldn't consider them a team that underwent a rebuild because that usually implies the deconstruction of an entire roster followed by deliberate tanking and then big name free agent acquisitions slash major draft moves in order to become a contender once again. That's not exactly what happened for the Warriors. Really, the biggest draft move for them was the acquisition of James Wiseman, who so far hasn't exactly been a major contributor for the team. That's not to say that Wiseman is going to be a bad player or anything like that, just that his development isn't the priority at the moment as much as retooling this team for a playoff run is. Something that a lot of Warriors fans need to realize is that big men typically take longer to develop. Aside from a few outliers, big men take a few years to quote unquote break out. That could end up being the case for Wiseman, and while he's not a contributor right now and he's currently out recovering from surgery, he could be a nice transitional piece as the Warriors Big 3 slowly enters the later years of their career. Now, while on the subject of the draft, let's talk about Jordan Poole. Poole has been the talk of NBA media lately after a really, really impressive preseason showing from him. We even saw glimpses of what he was capable of last season. In the last 20 games of the season last year, he averaged 14.5 points per game on 59.2% true shooting. His shot creation ability was what really impressed me personally, showing that not only could he hit the open catch and shoot shot, but also use his crafty handle and solid footwork to create a good look for himself. He seems to be able to hit the difficult shots as well, shooting over defenders closing out on him at a fairly high rate. While it's next to impossible to replace Klay Thompson for the time being, Jordan Poole's ascension is definitely something to monitor this season going forward as he could end up having a breakout season that sees him go from being a bench contributor to potentially a fringe all-star caliber player. In his first start of the season against the Lakers, he dropped 20 points and made four threes on 11 attempts, so this could be a sign of things to come. I'm really intrigued to see just how good he becomes this season. Another key factor that's going to help dictate the Warriors' success this year is going to be Draymond Green being a more aggressive offensive weapon. Now, we all know it's never been Draymond's job to be a scorer for that team, but I think it is important for him to at least draw some level of defensive attention in order to keep defenses honest and not feel like they can sag off him and only guard Steph Curry. He notched six assists in their first game and played solid defense on Anthony Davis, so we know that area of his game is going to be just fine. And then of course, Steph Curry is Steph Curry. He had a really rough shooting night in their season opener, but he contributed in a lot of other areas, notching his first triple-double since 2016. The fact that they were able to pull out the win against the Lakers despite some pretty rough shooting from Curry, says a lot about the resiliency that this team is showing. Andre Iguodala looked like he's going to help this team out a lot as well. 
He notched 12 points and hit his threes really well while also playing some good defense. That's about all they're going to ask of him, and it's something I think he's going to be really good at for them. In my opinion, the Heat probably expected a little bit too much from him during his time in Miami, and I think his role in Golden State is going to be a lot more conducive to what he's capable of at this point in his career. The unsung star of the show was Bijalitsa, and I don't know what kind of treatment he was getting before the game, but it must have been something good because he dropped a 15 point and 11 rebound double double while being really, really efficient. This is, of course, not even remotely sustainable for him as he's a career 8 points and 5 rebounds per game guy, but if he can contribute both with his perimeter shooting and rebounding ability, he's going to be an integral part of this team trying to make a finals push during the postseason. Now, the big question mark right now is what do the Warriors do with James Wiseman? He's currently slated to be reevaluated on November 1st, after having surgery during the offseason to repair a partially torn right meniscus, typically this isn't an injury that has long-term impacts on players, and most of the time, recovery is fairly quick. The question is, how do the Warriors want to use him this year? Wiseman said that he wants to simplify his game to integrate with Steph Curry and fit more seamlessly into the Warriors' current scheme. One of the biggest areas that Wiseman struggled last year was on the defensive end of the floor. And it sounds like that's been a big area that he's been working on this offseason to try and improve. Wiseman taking a leap this year is going to be something that determines how far the Warriors can go this offseason, as they're fairly thin at the center position already. Wiseman coming in and being able to contribute will be a major X factor as the season progresses. I know he's been mentioned in trade talks, but personally, I'm not sure I'm ready to give up on him just yet. I still think he can become a solid contributor for this team. There are a bunch of other things to monitor with the Warriors this year, like Otto Porter Jr. and whether or not he's going to be able to be consistent enough of a rotational piece for the Warriors. Andrew Wiggins being a smarter offensive player and consistent on defense like he was last year is another thing that's going to be massive for this team. And then they have their rookies, Moses Moody and Jonathan Kaminga, but I have a feeling unfortunately that they're not going to get a ton of meaningful burn time this season, just because that's typically how Steve Kerr operates. Kaminga is currently out right now with an injury, and Moody only got six minutes of run in the season opener, but Kaminga is something interesting to watch. He looked really, really good in preseason and during the summer league. I truly think that he, by the end of the season, could become a solid contributor for this team. It's just a matter of if he makes the most of the opportunities that he does get and if he can show that he can be a meaningful rotational player and minimize the mistakes on the offensive and defensive end. To me, there's four major aspects at play here in determining what the Warriors are truly capable of in the postseason. The first one is Klay Thompson's return, arguably being the most important aspect. Two is Jordan Poole elevating his game to becoming a true second slash third option once Clay comes back. Three is Draymond going to be more aggressive on the offensive end and draw more defensive attention to open up more space for Steph Curry to go to work. And then the fourth is James Wiseman going to progress into a solid rotational big man. These are the things that are going to dictate just how far the Warriors can go in the offseason the biggest number one factor being Klay Thompson's return, which is looking like it won't be at least until 2022. Now, assuming all of these things come to fruition, this Warriors team stacks up against just about every team in the Western Conference. They'd have the star power, they'd have the depth, and they'd have the coaching. Where do you think the Warriors will finish in the standings this year, and how far do you think they go in the playoffs? Be sure to let me know in the comment section, and as always, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because that is the best way to help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to follow me on Twitter so you never miss a video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks.